As a Christian leader, I want to address some comments that have been sent to me by others saying, hey, look, you say it's the, the Muslims or the radical Muslims who hate homosexuals who want to put them to death, but there are Christians who are just like you, and they're saying the same thing. Listen, I completely, utterly, categorically renounce those sentiments, those statements. I want to say plainly they do not represent the gospel in any way, shape, size, or form. But here's one pastor, Stephen Anderson, who's got something to say. Listen to what he has to say, and then I'll give you my response. Here's the good news and the bad news about this. You know, the good news is that there's 50 less pedophiles in this world because, you know, these homosexuals are a bunch of disgusting perverts and pedophiles. That's who was a victim here, are a bunch of just disgusting homosexuals at a gay bar, okay? But the, the bad news is that this is now going to be used, I'm sure, to push for gun control where, you know, law-abiding normal Americans are not going to be allowed to have guns for self-defense. And then I'm sure it's also going to be used to push an agenda against so-called hate speech. So Bible-believing Christian preachers who preach what the Bible actually says about homosexuality, that it's vile, that it's disgusting, that they're reprobates, you know, we're going to be blamed. Like, oh, it's, it's, it's all extremism. It's not just the Muslims, it's the Christians. I'm sure that that's coming. I'm sure that people are going to start attacking, you know, Bible-believing Christians now. Absolutely. Categorically. I renounce those words as contrary to the gospel, contrary to the word of God, contrary to the God we serve, contrary to the gospel message we preach. Oh, yes, the pastor is correct in saying that this will have a chilling effect on so-called hate speech laws. I've already written about that, addressed it, plan to address it more, that a radical Muslim can kill gay men and women in a gay club, and Christians are going to get blamed for it. And yes, I understand this is going to further politicize gun law issues and all that. Okay, I understand that. We all understand that. But the idea that we should be glad that this is good news because there are 50 less pedophiles and perverts in the world, what a perversion of the gospel. What does it say in, in Ezekiel, the 18th chapter? God has no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but rather that they turn and live. God grieves over sinners sinning and dying. He grieves over that. But let's go further. What, what about all the heterosexual pedophiles? And what about all the adulterers in the church? And what about all the other people doing things worthy of death according to the standards of God? Do we rejoice when, when they, there's a car wreck or this tragedy or that? Say, hey, there's a lot more sinners dead. God forbid. No, we grieve over it. Jesus came to seek and save the lost. Oh, 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 and let's go a little further. Yeah, I know percentage-wise that you may have a higher number of pedophiles among homosexuals and heterosexuals, but let's bottom line this out. In terms of numbers, there are far, 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 far more heterosexual pedophiles in terms of numbers than homosexual pedophiles. And let's go further than this. Plenty, plenty, plenty. In fact, every, every gay person I've ever met has renounced pedophilia as, as wrong. Yes, of course, it's wrong. It's sinful for a man to be with a man or a woman to be with a woman. Let's also recognize that in that bar, there are people that were killed that are hurting, that are lost, that have questions, that have maybe been mistreated by the, the church that we need to reach out to with the gospel. What, what, a, what a perverse statement by this pastor. And go ahead, call me soft. Go ahead. But you're going to have to call my God soft. You're going to have to call Jesus soft. You're going to have to call the word of God soft. There's not going to be blood on my hands. I'm going to say plainly what the Bible says is sin is sin. And I'm going to say plainly that we don't take life. We lay our lives down to reach those who are lost in sin and who are hurting and who don't know God. Uh, he also had this to say, which is even more scary. I would never take things into my own hands or become a vigilante. But I will say this, you know, the Bible says that homosexuals should be put to death in Leviticus 2013. Obviously, it's not right for somebody to just, you know, shoot up the place because that's not going through the proper channels. But these people all should have been killed anyway, but they should have been killed through the proper channels, as in they should have been executed by a righteous government that would have, you know, tried them, convicted them, and saw them executed. Because in Leviticus 2013, God's perfect law, he put the death penalty on murder, and he also put the death penalty on homosexuality. That's what the Bible says, plain and simple. Wait a second. Wait a second. That, that same Bible he's quoting, that same law of Moses that he's quoting, requires the death penalty for Sabbath breaking. 
it requires the death penalty for adultery. And then what does Jesus tell us about we can commit adultery in our hearts? You want to start throwing stones and say, yeah, they deserve to die. I'm glad they die. And, and yeah, it's, the guy didn't go through the right uh, process, but he should have killed them. Well, friends, we're in big trouble then. Remember what Jesus said in Luke 13? You're going to say, okay, these people died. A tower fell on them. A pilot killed them. They died because they were worse sinners than everybody. Jesus said, no, unless you repent, you're all going to perish. And what does Paul say at the end of Romans 1? He speaks of things worthy of death. Included in that are envy and gossip. You know, if, if, if these are all acts of divine judgment, then we better keep our eyes open every Sunday morning because divine judgment's coming our way. First Peter 4, judgment begins with the house of God. Let's get our own houses in order. Let's repent of our sins. Let's preach the gospel to all, call them to repent of sin. Well, let's grieve right now over human beings created in God's image, fallen sinners like the rest of us needing God's mercy. Let's grieve over their slaughter. Let's grieve over the ugliness of radical Islam. Let us utterly disassociate ourselves from that spirit and come in the spirit of the Son of Man who came to save men's lives, not destroy them. 